Introducing the Little Green Seeding Machine. This tool can help you seed your microgreens up to 300 trays per hour. With all this extra free time you'll have, you can spend it growing the business with sales and production, or you can spend more time with family and friends and less time on the farm. The Little Green Seed Machine works with all of the most common microgreens varieties, including pea, sunflower, radish, brassicas, mustards, amaranth, basil, and so many more. This tool seeds much more evenly than hand seeding, reducing disease risk while also increasing the uniformity of your crops, and do it twice as fast. Pre-order your Little Green Seed Machine today and join the microgreens revolution. Welcome to the Microgreens Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Jonah Krokmalnik. Together, we'll explore the art of turning tiny seeds into a thriving microgreens empire, sharing insights, coveted secrets, and strategic wisdom from building one of Canada's largest microgreens farms. Stay tuned for thought-provoking conversations with leading figures in the world of microgreens. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. My name is Jonah, and I founded one of Canada's largest microgreens farms, growing over a quarter million trays of microgreens in my farming career. And I'm on a mission to help growers and farmers like you grow more food with less resources and make their farms lean profit machines. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different than the normal podcast episode. We're going to focus on really important mindset principles to allow you to thrive in your business. I think it'll be really helpful to share some of my mindset principles that I applied to Living Earth Farm that allowed the business to grow so rapidly and more recently allowed me to simultaneously build the Little Green Sea Machine, run Microgreens Consulting, building all the free tools that you guys are utilizing, the podcast, farm tours, crop experiments, all while only working part-time hours, allowing a ton of leisure time for myself. This is really powerful stuff and I'm excited to share this wisdom with you guys today. So let's get right into it. So the first mindset principle that's really helped me grow my businesses um, is reframing challenges as opportunities to grow. So it's very common to have challenges in one running a business. This is something that you know every entrepreneur is going to face. There's going to be uh, a huge headwind of challenges in many different aspects in sales and production, in um, hiring people, in uh, you know potentially supply issues or cost issues or making the financials work. There's so many challenges that can come up when running a business. You pretty much have to do everything when you start, which a lot of you guys uh, are experiencing in, in any stage of, of the business that you're in. So um, if you can understand that these challenges are there for a reason, they're an opportunity for you to grow. And what I've learned in just my personal life and in business is any challenge that you face that you don't use as an opportunity to grow will continue to re-happen and reoccur until you learn how to deal with that issue or that challenge. So for example, in the early days of Living Earth Farm, when I first started hiring people, I was like, I don't know, 25, 26 when I first started hiring people and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Um, and when you hire people, there's a lot of uh, dynamics at play. There's uh, wages, how you guys uh, you know work well together, um, how you actually manage people in and of itself. And I kept running an issue where I couldn't get people to stay for more than you know six to twelve months, um, and it was a big issue because every time someone quits, you have to you know retrain them, and it was it was a big time suck for me. And um, when I started, I didn't really see this as an opportunity. I was like, why is this happening to me? Uh, you know, how, why can't I find like good people that want to stay and contribute to the business when in fact it was really, how do I adapt for the business to hire better people and also uh, better manage people? So that's something that in and of itself is, is a very big challenge and something that, you know, I think it is a multi-year process to understand how to do that. Some people it comes naturally, but most people it's quite challenging. So when I started adopting this reframe that challenges opportunities to grow it allowed me to reflect internally and be like, okay, what I can't change the external world, but I can change myself. So what things can I change in myself to allow it to be easier for people to work for me, for people to enjoy working for me and for people to want to stay longer term in the business. So some of that can be like, you know, super simple, like, okay, I need to make the business grow more so that I can have enough money to pay higher wages and higher wages generally will deter having as high turnover in your business. But then there's other things like um, how you manage people. So uh, if you micromanage people, 
um, it's going to be a lot harder and more more unenjoyable for people to work there than if you're collaborative, as an example. So that's something that you know I had to shift in myself in uh, having a natural tendency to like you know, checking on people very often to uh, allowing them in the later years to have much more freedom to uh, run their part of the business uh, and their and their role in their own way. And then just checking in to make sure that things are, are aligned with with the business's goals. So um, this is a great example because it's, I guess, one that I experienced myself. But I think it's really important to reframe these challenges as opportunities to grow. Another really great example of this that was like a huge lesson for me in uh, the early years of Living Earth Farm. Um, I really wanted to sell living product um, because it's less labor intensive. It's more profitable. You can like expand the business with less people and less automation. It's not as important because uh, you don't have to harvest. Uh, you, you just deliver it. So you don't have to package it. it, it that's a huge part of uh, an operation is harvest days. And so if you just eliminate that, like, you can grow the business with uh, way more profitability and way faster with less resources. Um, so that was great. But the challenge was I couldn't get enough sales because there just was less demand for that product. And I kept trying to make it work um, for about a, a year. I just kept pushing through and being like, okay, I'm going to make this work until I came to the point where I was like, I can't grow the business this way. Um, how can I reframe what I'm doing uh, to make it an opportunity to grow this business? And I kind of thought about it. And I was like, how can I add the most value in what I'm doing? Because there's obviously demand for microgreens. People want to buy it. How do I make it as easy as possible for them to buy it? So that's how I used it as a reframing of like, okay, this isn't working. Um, so I can keep trying to do the same thing or I can make a big change to the business model to allow it to continue to grow in a rapid manner, which is what I was trying to do at that time. And what I decided to do was to, to just test out doing cut product um, and see like, how do I make that work? How do I make it work labor wise? Which, you know, this was a big problem to solve. There needed to be enough efficiency so that I can uh, harvest the products, still have good profit margins. That's where kind of automation came into play um, pretty uh, intensively into the farm. Um, but I started giving product, cut product to distributors that would often say no to me. And all of a sudden they're saying yes. So I used that uh, challenge of like this, I'm struggling to get sales instead of being like, okay, I'm just going to double down on what I'm doing. It's like, what is the opportunity here from this challenge that I can use to grow the business? And in this case, it was making a big change to the business to allow um, the business to grow in a much more sustainable way for the long term. Even though there was a trade-off of having more labor and more costs of automation that are required to make that process work. Um, but the trade-off was obviously worth it because the farm was able to grow very rapidly from that big decision. So I think those are some good examples of like, like challenges you may have with sales or with production um, or with you know team members that you can turn into an opportunity to grow. And this ties into the second mindset principle, which is that personal growth and business growth aren't separate. They actually work together to create a synergy. So a lot of people um, like to separate their personal life and their business life, which is it, which totally makes sense and is definitely a good thing to do. You definitely don't want to be taking home your your, your problems and challenges um, and just like holding on to them when you're at home with family. So that, that's not what I'm saying at all, but that the opportunity to grow from your business challenges can also be an opportunity to grow uh, personally. So for example, if you're experiencing a challenge in your business, like getting enough sales, you can kind of internally reflect and be like, okay, what, how am I showing up as a human being to these sales meetings? Am I coming in like being really nervous and, um, and not feeling confident in going and getting a sale? Um, and if that's the case, there is, you know, obviously th there's the business aspect of that, which is you're trying to get more sales, but then there's the personal aspect, which is how do you want to show up in these interactions with other people, whether it's at work or personally, and they're inter intertwined quite substantially. I've noticed this as, as I've grown uh, personally, as an example, I can much better, uh, you know, have sales calls or um, interact with staff or, uh, you know, collaborate with with other creators and, and uh, people in the space because I have a better understanding of how I'm showing up. Um, so just self-reflection in and of itself. And there's a lot of different ways uh, to do this. Like there's meditation. And by meditation, I, I don't mean like 
some like super spiritual practice that you have to do. It's just trying to find different ways um, to uh, understand yourself better. And the better you understand yourself, the better able you to show up for uh, your business and for your personal life. Um, and I actually, a great example of this is I have a friend um, who, who is an engineer and uh, he worked at an electric uh, car startup and um, really, really smart guy. And um, one way that he solves challenges in his, uh, uh, for work is, is not actually being in the business and like sitting at a desk on a computer being like, hmm, thinking, trying to solve the problem. Um, the way that he solves problems is being active in something that he gets a lot of joy out of. So he loves tennis. He can solve problems better for the business by playing tennis than doing work. And it sounds so counterintuitive on the surface, but when you, when you dive in deep and actually start uh, doing these type of things and bringing these practices of thinking about business in your personal life um, and trying to solve problems in the background while you're, uh, you know, running your, your day-to-day -day life, whether it's, you know, on a weekend or whatever, this is how the smartest people I know solve real problems and make uh, big strides in their business or their, their job. So I've had the same experience where my decision to actually expand Living Earth Farm and double the size and take on uh, a lot of financial costs, more staff, like it's, it's a big decision to, to go through a major expansion. I didn't actually make that decision while working. I made that decision on vacation. And being outside of the business allows you to have like a bird's eye view of like, okay, I really am happy what I'm doing. And I just need to change these few things to allow me to make this decision to expand the business. Um, good analogy that, that, you know, I've heard many times is, are you uh, looking at the tree? Or are you looking at the forest? Um, you know, like, are, are you in an airplane looking down at the big picture? Or are you in the trees of, let's say the trees are all the challenges you have? Are you there? Or are you in the airplane seeing the big picture of how the forest and the ecosystem is working together? So it's really a, a, a really good idea to take some personal time away from the business. Um, and sometimes that could just be half a day going on a hike or doing something you really love to have a uh, new frame or experience in what you're actually doing day to day. And this happens all the time, even for me now, um, when I can you know, get a day away and, and just do uh, something um, I love, then I, I, this is when the biggest ideas form in my mind and allow me to uh, get really creative and solve problems uh, in a really intuitive and creative way is the simplest way to put it. So your personal growth and your business growth aren't separate. They really do work together. And I encourage you to start thinking in this mindset to allow yourself to um, have the benefits on both the personal side and the business growth side for you as a whole, as a person. One thing I definitely recommend if you've never tried it is uh, to spend like 60 bucks, go to a float tank, which is like just a, a big tank without any um, distractions. You're kind of in like this dark environment. There's no sound. You're kind of floating at like room temperature. Like Joe Rogan talks about this a lot. Um, and, and it's just you with your mind. And it allows you to see uh, patterns and habits um, and, and the way you think a lot more clearly. And the awareness of how you think and how you make decisions will allow you to change that if that's something you want to do. So just having that time alone. And I think a float tank is the best way because there's absolutely no distractions. You can't grab your phone. You can't listen to music. Um, it's just you with your mind. So you create a lot more awareness in that uh, environment. Um, and I've used this uh, to also to make decisions in my personal life and, and business. So it, it really can be helpful and it's well worth the time to spend um, alone with yourself and your thoughts to understand how to make better decisions. Because the better decisions you can make, the easier your life will become personally and in your business. And uh, and the more you can understand that they're intertwined, uh, the better you can create a much more enjoyable business and personal life for yourself and your family. And the last mindset principle that we're going to talk about today is time. So time is by far your most valuable asset. This took me quite a long time to, to realize in my business because as most migraines growers are, very bootstrapped. Like you wanna do everything yourself. You wanna be uh, the salesperson, the production person, the marketing person, your social media manager. You want to be everything because you love this business. And it makes sense. You wanna be the operator um, and, and, and all aspects of the business. It's your passion project most likely if you're a migraines grower and, and running a migraines business. 
But um, the sooner you can realize that time is your most valuable asset, the much faster you can grow the business and have a lifestyle that doesn't doesn't cause you to work 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours a week and gives you your time back, which is your most valuable thing in this life is your time. Um, and, and some people only learn this once they have a significant amount of money because they're usually, okay, money will give me that, which, which it will. Um, but there's ways to utilize your time better without having, you know, a lot of money that will, uh, give you not only more money, but more time as well. So, um, I think this is really, really important to understand. So obviously if you don't have any money to start, um, you have to do more things yourself, but rather than waiting till, you know, you have a substantial amount of savings to start outsourcing, uh, aspects of your business, it's much better to start that process earlier on because it'll allow you to spend the time on the most valuable things for the business, which are sales and strategy. Those as the big picture uh, owner of the business are the most important things for you to think about and spend your time on. So production, once you have things up and running, if, if you're going to run this as a business, you should be doing a minimal amount of production and a minimal amount of like deliveries and things like that. Like those are not the most valuable use of your time as the business owner. It's much, much, much better utilized to think about strategy, how you want to grow this business, how you want to automate, um, how you want to, to approach sales and products and what products you're going to grow, which ones you aren't, um, sales you're going to do, uh, uh, you know, big picture promotions and, and things like that. Like these are the things that you should be spending your time on. And this is where, you know, something like automation comes into play where it's like you can hire someone to do things. Um, and that is a, uh, you know, a much better way than doing everything yourself. But I think automation is even better because uh, a lot of automation can run with less people, meaning you'll have less challenges with like people calling in sick and, um, and consistency and reliability and product quality, like automation fixes a lot of those problems. Um, and then low cost automation is like a no brainer. If it pays for itself in less than a year, those type of automations like, um, uh, the quick greens harvester, the little green seeding machine, um, in some cases, like even soil mixing machines, once you get to a larger scale can pay for themselves really fast in labor savings, tray washing machines, all these things that maybe even let's say they add up to $20,000, which is, I think you can do it for less than that. Um, if let's say they add up to $20,000, that's like half a year salary for someone making like $20 an hour. So it's, it's not, um, it, it's not a significant cost when you think about it. it's like, okay, the labor versus the cost of machinery and how much time that saves you. And then when you have that automation, what, whose time does that free up the most? It's most likely going to be yours if you're at that smaller scale and you haven't uh, hired people to do those tasks yet. So even, even more so it allows you then saving money is save your time, which like I said, is your most valuable asset. So a great way to think about this is just the, like simply the amount of weeks you have in your life to just estimate what that is. So if you're 30 years old and you think you're going to live to 90, you have 60 years, which gives you roughly 3000 weeks of your life. When you start thinking about that, it's like 3000 weeks. If I like in each year, you're using 52 weeks of this limited resource time. In theory, there's no limit on how much money you can make. You can make millions, you know, like unlikely, but potentially billions of dollars in, in, in business enterprise and running businesses. But can you get time back? You, you, you can't make more time. You can like be as healthy as you can, but you can't like magically make more time. Like maybe some of you believe that like AI will figure out how to make us live forever, but you know, I, I, I'm skeptical on that. So I just, under the assumption, I have a very limited amount of time on this, on this planet. How can I make the most use out of that time? And sometimes that's like, um, you know, leisure time, leisure time can be very important to you. So the more, the more uh, you automate your business, the more you have staff that are doing the work for you, the more that you have what is most valuable to you in, in that case, if it's leisure time or spending time with your family. So automation, as an example, gives you this. Hiring people also gives you this in a different way, but it's the same principle, which is if you understand the uh, and have the mindset that time is the most valuable asset, not money, um, it's going to really revolutionize not only how you run your business, but how you like live your life and the decisions you make. So if you're doing the same thing in and out, in and out, in and out, uh, running your business or in your personal life, and you want that to change, if you think of it in this way, you will make decisions 
uh, out of out of that principle rather than out of fear. It's like, oh, how am I going to have enough money? Um, like, I need to do this. Like all, all these ideas that you you put in your head that limit you in understanding um, what how much time you really have on this earth to do whatever it is you want to do. Um, and there's no right answer. There's no like, okay, you should grow your business or you should, um, uh, you know, spend more time traveling or uh, spending time with family. It's whatever is for you. It's it's not, it's amazing that you get to make that decision for yourself, but just to have the principle that time is your most valuable asset because it is. And the sooner that um, you can uh, recognize that and understand that, the better decisions you'll make for yourself, for your business and for uh, your family. So I hope that helps you in your business. I know this is a bit different of an episode than we normally do, um, but I think it's really important to emphasize these principles, how they help me in uh, my personal growth and my business growth and how they can help you. So let me know in the comments if you like this style of podcast. I'd be happy to do more of like mindset type of stuff for you guys rather than just like how to grow microgreens and what are the best principles in growing microgreens, uh, more so like general business practices that can revolutionize um, how you see the world, how you operate in the world, and uh, and at the end of the day, make you a lot more money as well, just in a different way. So the idea is to teach you guys how to fish rather than just providing fish for you guys, because the more you can understand this, the more impact you can have in the world. And that's what I love to see um, more microgreens growers, more healthy, delicious food out in the world. And the better that you can apply these mindset principles, the better you can do that. So definitely let me know if you'd like to have more episodes like this in the future. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to the Mike Green's Mastery Podcast. To access a wealth of insights, just click the subscribe button, stay notified about each new episode and enjoy all of this wisdom for free. If you're ready to supercharge your microgreens business, visit microgreensconsulting.com for a gold mine of guides and resources. We've transformed thousands of microgreens businesses and you're invited to join the success story. Let's stay connected. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at microgreens consulting for exclusive content and expert tips and wisdom. If you found this episode insightful, please leave us a review, spread the word, and let's share microgreens magic with the world. Until next time, let curiosity fuel your growth and may happiness be your harvest. Happy growing, everyone.